Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, a few weeks ago somebody asked if I would uh, show how to make an egg cup. Um, so I made that one um, and then I thought back to when I first started I used to make what I call baronial egg cups. I felt they had a bit more going for them and the, the kind of thing a baron would be uh, eating his egg from in a medieval castle. Uh, yes, very unlikely. Uh, but anyway, um, this is a face work egg cup and that's what you're going to see in this video. My idea with this egg cup uh, is it's going to be out of a, uh, a piece of 6 inch by 3 inch thick, uh, which is 150 by 75 millimeters, um, cross grained egg cup. So there, that's where the egg will go. Uh, in there um, and it'll have a kind of dish to put a spoon or the eggshell and that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do first is to do the bottom and then turn it round into another chuck uh, and uh, do all the shaping. And I'm using um, uh, a homemade um, screw chuck uh, similar to the one you see on, on the video. And I've got this blank here, which is already screwed, um, got a hole drilled in it. Now, looking at the blank, I've just noticed, unfortunately, a big split here, which uh, I'm hoping is going to vanish. And uh, what else have we got? And there's another split here, which shouldn't, and that goes, I can just see it in there, which shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but... Uh, it might mean that I have to abort this altogether. We'll just see how we go. Um, just in case it hasn't gone all the way on, just lock the spindle and cinch it up. Right, so first thing is going to be to get rid of... Um, I'll do a little bit of uh, getting rid of that and I'll just mark where it is on that line and I'm going to use a half inch spindle gouge just to true the side up. Where to look? Not looking good. Anyway, we'll just take another couple of cuts and see what we've got. Ah, almost gone, I think, so I'll probably get away with that. It's not going to be quite as big an egg cup as I thought but that's probably going to be a good thing in the long run. Um, I need a, uh, a shear scraper just to flatten this. Oops, no, maybe not. Do it with a half inch spindle guard. Slightly concave, yes. I haven't got the bulk off, I can now use the skewed scraper. Uh, it's rattling very slightly because the top of this blank isn't dead flat, therefore, it's wobbling on the screw a little bit. So it just means I've got to go much more gently, and that was not gently. So in order not to get so much of the edge in contact with the wood, tilt it up on edge. This is a shear scraper with a rounded side. So. And uh, that's less likely to, well, it, it can't grab as much of the wood as an edge flat on the rest will. Now to uh, mount this, I'm going to put it on uh, expanding jaws. So. Uh, this will be going on a on the uh, step jaws. 
you know, for step draws of the um, the Vicmar chuck, so that should be alright. There's enough wood round the outside to support that. Um, although, what's running through my mind, because the... Um, no, we'll just go with that. And if there's any other problem, uh, that'll be something else for you to uh, have a look at. This is a half inch square inch scraper, which is not completely square inch, but a slight radius to it. So I can't get all of that edge in there at once and this just needs sharpening. In fact in this case I'm going to hone it. Now it's jumping around quite a bit because the blank is not flat up there. So when you're using the expanding jaws of a chuck, you want to make sure that the, the bottom of the recess is flat and I've got a little uh, homemade uh, straight edge to do that, multiple straight edge and if it can rock on the wood at all then the bottom isn't flat it would be tilted slightly that way there we go going to be all right now. Um, I'm going to use the, oh, this is a 3-8 spindle guys in fact, just to round that over. Nope. Being a bit inept this morning, so I'll just do it with a square end instead. That's that. And if you want to dovetail it at all, and the best way is to get uh, probably a, a half inch spindle gouge and just go in like that. Now that's the bottom down so I can do that and then I can turn the whole thing round. Well just as I picked up the abrasive um, the uh, power went off so I've just had lunch uh, in the break in the one hour break now I can see I've just could just take out a little line there which I didn't notice before. So I'll do that with the uh, half inch skew. Someone will want to know how deep this is. Uh, that is one eighth of an inch which is three millimeters. And remember it's flat. Forty grit. And I'm not going to get at this again, so it's going to get wax. This is beeswax, pushing it fairly hard against the wood. And then a oh, little collection of wax which has fallen out of my wax box. Uh, now, so this is the waxy sock pushed against the wood just to melt the wax into the wood and the surplus comes off into the sock.
right and that can come off and so you can see how to make one of these chucks um, in making a screw chuck video and uh, if you can't afford to uh, run to one of those and, but you've got a faceplate on your lathe they're very easy to make number 14 old number 14 wood screw although you could use almost any kind of nice fat screw in there step jaws Now, the main thing here is uh, we'll establish the approximate diameter of the, uh, of the actual egg cup, which is going to be around there. So, uh, in fact, that's not even right. That will be the size of the opening, which is 40 millimeters. Um, so I can come out to about there. So I'm going to reduce most of that uh, and hopefully that split. Uh, which is lurking in where is it there it's quite a long split just mark where that is so I know where to look for it and I'm also going to mark it down on the bottom and there was another split there which uh, I'm just going to mark that with a pencil line so I know roughly where that is and I'll also mark that on the lower area so I know where to look for it. So all this is going to come off. Now if, um, if you're not quite sure about how the chuck's going to hang on you can bring up the tail centre. Half inch spindle gouge. This is face work and there are a lot of people who say you should never use a spindle gouge on face work. What they're talking about is deep fluted spindle roughing gouges. Half inch spindle gouge, very efficient and a much less expensive tool than uh, bowl gouges. So I'm just using the whole of this wing here. Uh, just holding it at the right angle so that I get this nice curly shaving coming off. Just gone down past the uh, where the horizontal split was. Now the earlier cuts didn't have the the bevel rubbing, um, so as I was cutting, there, I don't get a particularly smooth surface, or I can get a smooth surface, but it's a bit ridgy run your fingernail over it and you might even be able to see the ridges uh, torn on the end grain a little bit um, but I can get that much cleaner if I have the bevel rubbing and taking a shear cut now most things I want to see first is what's happened to that split and it's gone which is a relief um, right so this is what I've got to play with in the way of a shape now the next thing I'm going to do is establish the the hollow uh, and then I'll do the shaping. So I'm going to use the wing of the tool just to really shear scrape that to get myself a smooth surface. So I can roll the tool over, get the bevel rubbing, rotate slightly anti-clockwise, take a shear cut back to the middle. Now 
Now, do I want my egg sitting up, so it's kind of on the top of a mountain, or on top of a mountain in a little dip? Um, so, I'm thinking about that. We'll just get the these calipers are set to 40 millimeters. Mark with the left, so it lines up with the right. Right there. So this is <coughs> a um, cross grain, no back hollowing here. So I need a little uh, deep fluted gouge to uh, just get that out. And I'll, you know, the three eighths came to hand. Three eighths deep fluted bowl gouge. Right on its sides I go in on the line. Round and inside then I'll... It's pretty smooth in there. Um, but I've got a little lump in the bottom. And the uh, easiest way I find to do that is with a, a scraper. So I've got the one inch round nose scraper. I can't bring the light down because the camera's in the way. Um, but it would be nice to have just a little bit more light in there. Right, so that's that. Um, I might just dish the top very slightly, I think. and. Uh, a uh, half inch spindle gouge. Now, I've got to bear in mind this is going to get washed up. If you're eating an egg out of this, there's a good chance of egg yolk spilling over the side, so you don't want any detail around here which makes washing up quickly. I'm just going to sand that so I know what I'm working to. So, uh, 180 grit. This is my the yellow stuff. Mm. Just wondering if that should be. I think I'll just make it a little bit deeper. So I'm going to put the speed up slightly. And uh, now oh, this is the half inch spindle gouge comes to hand, so that's what I'll use. from the wood and going too hard for it. bit of picked up grain there so I'm going to come back to some 120 and of course it's picking up very slightly on the end grain uh, I'm going to go in reverse because I've got reverse And if you're going to be sanding in reverse, you want to make sure the chuck's going to be on. So if you haven't got a chuck lock, or you're not using a chuck lock, uh, when you put the chuck on, you just need to give it a little flick onto the spindle, um, which just makes it a little bit more secure. Forward this time. And we'll go in reverse.
Ah, oh, it's a bit big now, that 240, so nice thing with cloth back paper, it tears easily. Right, so that's the inside finished. Now, what to do with the outside to make it kind of uh, look more shapely. I'll just shift the camera a bit. So I'm going to do most of this with the half inch spindle gouge and the idea is to just rough out an overall shape. I want a um, somewhere to put a spoon in there. So. like this is going to be sitting kind of on top of the mountain. I'm just going to put that up so that'll pop the whole egg up. A hint of a curve there. Uh, a little bit of kind of ogee coming down to the um, kind of bead. The grain is cross-grained so I mustn't have anything too thin in there because the uh, be very easy just to knock the whole thing off. Right. So there. Now I want to take a shear cut in here. Still using the half inch spindle guide. how that looks. It looks almost looks sandable. Uh, a little bit of picked out grain there and it's chipping a little bit on the rim because it's very thin um, but um, just chamfer that will take care of that. And then around here uh, it's beginning to be a little bit difficult to get in there so we'll take this bit away first give me a shade more room. Oops, should be coming that way. This is a grain going to cross grain going from larger to smaller diameter. Now coming in here. A little curve back there, tool right on its side. And I'm gonna just drop the handle and Thicker bead in there, and then a little cove which comes off the left wing of the tool. Now it'd be nice to be able to get in just a little bit more under the bead, but I can't do it with that tool. Uh, haven't got a long enough bevel, whereas this is the 3 8 longer bevel. And that's uh, just right on its side. I've really just defined the bottom of the bead. And then I've used the whole of that wing just to do a cove. And then I'm going to undercut that very slightly. And then open the tool up slightly. And just drag it back. So. I think I want a bit more of a curve in the bottom here. And then I'm just using the right wing of the tool to shear scrape 
a little lump just there. Right. It's looking suitably ostentatious and uh, I'm going to take a little shear cut here, 3 8 spindle gouge. So very slowly push the handle away so I get a slight curve there. I'm going to use the right wing just to undercut that very slightly and we'll put a chamfer on it. And just wondering about to make this look more like some kind of vase you might have in a garden so I'm going to put a undercut the the cut part a little bit Ooh, it's nearly a bit ambitious there still yep I think we'll live with that so him with the uh, 180 grit. Now I feel that. That's really not a curve. So uh, it's going to have to be recut. And the lump has moved up to there. Feels better. a little bit of something there a little bit of grain picked out and I remember I cut that way um, which is not the best way to cut cross grain so you need to go from the smaller to the larger diameter so come back and just do that again using the half inch spindle gouge I just hope I'm not in your way Two forty grit.
so that is now the beeswax. And people are preoccupied with getting finer and finer and finer surfaces these days. But I can tell you that 30 years ago, very few people sanded much past 180 grit possibly 240 and the very eccentric went to 400. And if you're going to be using something it really doesn't need to be ultra finely sanded because if you ultra finely sand a usable article the chances are people won't use it in case they mess up the finish which is a real pity. genuine egg and a genuine spoon. <laughs> 